Yeah, fucking stay there. Hey, look, I'm fucking arguing. Really? Right. Good morning, world. It is the morning after the night before. Put me mic on. Well, that latest video, that went down like a lead balloon. Far be it from me having the audacity to try something new. Oh well, I shall keep going. Undeterred. Yeah, people seem to forget that uh, how much time goes into creating this content. People seem to forget that. Far be it from me for wanting to try something new. I don't know, seeing as... I don't know, maybe it's my own channel and I wanted to try something different. <laughs> Go figure, I don't know. Right, anyway, who gives a fuck? Baker Street, W1, uh, opposite Madame Tussauds. Uh, fire alarm mm. system not working. It's just gone eight o'clock. I'm waiting for Dave. He is stuck in traffic, I think. I will check, actually. All right, Anthony, are you on your way? It's traffic, I'll put any money stuck in traffic. I'll hang fire for you. I'll see you in a little while. Let's go and have a look together on our own. I'm not even going to take my tool bag for a minute. I'll just take, I'll just take myself. So yes, fire alarm system not working. I don't know, about 11 o'clock last night it started beeping and it hasn't stopped since. There was a key that was left up hanging, but I'm guessing that's gone missing. Right, please do not touch this. Tom will come to fix it very soon. Okay. Seven, communal. Apparently there's a fire in the communal area. Uh, me not think so, so I'm guessing there's a fault. Sorry about the flicker. Oh, the keys are still there. That's rare. Normally you leave the keys there and they disappear. Why are the emergency lights on as well? What is going on? Who has been fucking with this place while I've been not been here? Really? Right, emergency lights off again. Ah. Okay, the top smoke detector. This is the other thing with communal places. All the doors are bolted shut, you can't get in anywhere. Right, let me go and get my bag and we'll go and have a look. Now what you can do, if you're working on twin flex stuff and you don't want to use one of those, the, I've actually, this one here, I've actually snapped the handle of it, so I've actually just got the top piece now. Um, what you can do, if you don't want to use one of them, you can, I did have one here, yes, here, you can actually just use one of these, which is like a, a cut down removal tool, and you just basically clip that to your belt, I'm not showing you this very well. You just clip that to your belt, and then that bit there just extends. You just push that in the side of the detector, and then you just twist it off, um, which is basically, it does the job of that, but it's just a light version. If you're doing this every day, this is much handier to keep on you. Keeps you fit doing this. As soon as I disconnect that from its base, it's now gonna say there's a fault. No good, I need my ladder. It's saying there's a fire in the communal area, and it clearly isn't because no one's running out with their pants around their ankles, so. Right, you can go and do the dangerous bit. Oh, sorry, you take that. Cheers. You see, it, all the other ones are all right, but the one on the very top floor has got the red light flashing. It's a solid red, red light on it. Oh, there's just loads of shit in it. Dust. What's it look like inside? Looks fine. If I just reset the panel and then we'll um, put it just put it back on, yeah. I've got my radio, so just yeah, all right, mate. Right, the panel is probably now in fault mode, so in the end of the line's been disconnected. Right, it'll either go straight into a fire, or the fault will clear. I think it's all good up here, the last is flashing in intervals of like every three seconds or so. It seems to be alright. 
Let me just get the smoke spray out of the van a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I t should we put parking on the van first, actually, because we're yeah, let's just put half an hour on? Somewhere in here, I know I've got some. Look, zinc spray for tray, everybody. Look, fucking relax. Actually, that's the one I wanted. There. That stuff. Smoke spray. But yeah, I'm just having a look for cigarette butts. Someone's just having a cheeky fag in the hallway. <laughs> and they tried to put it out the window or something. Because that window's painted shut, I think. Yeah. All right, mate, ready when you are. That's fab. Can you do me a favor? Just blow a bit of air through the detector head just so it won't sound again. All right, mate, that's it. Let's skedaddle. So yeah, that could have been anything. Could have been somebody having a cheeky fag in the hallway. It could have been, you know, that could be anything and you're never going to get to the bottom of it. It's just one of those things. We've just reset it, tested it works and that's it. Off to the next job. So Dave has gone to Marlborough to go and finish a job over there. While he's done that, I was heading out to Northolt. But while I was on the way there, I was just passing through. I was just passing through here just so you can have a quick look at this and just see where this job has come to. If you remember, this was a kitchen we were working in uh, the other week, well, about a month ago, actually. They've plastered it. Um, in fact, they've done a huge amount there. So actually, they've replastered all this. They've taken the ceiling down, reboarded it, yada, yada, yada. So they've done quite a lot here. But that's the end result. All the sockets there. That's where the contactor will be and everything. Another switch there, yada, yada, yada. Usual bollocks. But it's come together. It's uh, obviously the kitchen's got to go in, but it looks nice. It's a nice. Uh, I think the customer's not even here actually, I just had a fob to let myself in and there's a, a, the wood flooring guys here. So this is going on, eventually I'm going to be back here at some point in the next week or so, I don't know when, because we've still got a load of work downstairs on the fuse board to do, but I just thought while I'm running past, I just wanted to, I just wanted to run in and just quickly show you this, just so you get a gauge of actually, you know, where we are and what we're working on at the moment, but this is still in the, in the pipeline. I'm going to get to North I'll see you in a second. Right, I don't know where Dave is, he should be on his way to... North Alt. Uh, he's just in front of me. Let's see if we can catch him up. Yeah, you'll have noticed over the last few weeks I'm trialling just a few different ideas on the channel, just different types of content and stuff. Um, a lot of people forget how much time goes into actually creating this content because it's, uh, you know, it's, it is a big undertaking to try and fit this around a full-time job is, is tough. So it's also, it's a it's a combination of doing, you know, it's not just creating content, it's creating content that you're happy creating. If I'm gonna devote, you know, 25, 30 hours a week into doing content, then it's gotta be doing something that I enjoy doing. So, uh, but a few people seem to be blissfully unaware of that, you know? I, I get some people don't like, you know, all the content that goes out, but I've also gotta be happy doing it, you know? So yeah, it is about doing something that you find fun as well. You know, it's, you've got to find it enjoyable. I'm not just going to spend my entire life creating content that people want. You know, I have to find it enjoyable to make it. So that's where the motor vlogs come from because I just find them fun to make. Which is the other reason people are asking for like tutorials and stuff, which I don't want to get into because I don't find them interesting. I don't find that sort of thing it doesn't interest me. So if it doesn't interest me, why should I do it? You know, because then it just becomes a chore to, to me. Right, today's a bit of a disjointed day because I'm just, um, I'm running around while Tom's over at that garage. I'm just, I've just come over to Go Bob's just to drop a load of tray into here. It makes more sense what they're doing now. I'll show you, noise. I'll show you what it is they're actually doing. It actually ended up turning into more of a detailing garage from what I got. You can see it now. So I thought it was actually valeting, but they see, I think they've moved more into detailing. But you can see what the plan is now. This makes a bit more sense. Now you can actually see all the, all the racks are in, you know, cleaning products, yada, yada, yada. Now, I mean, I've just dropped in a load of this, um, I've just dropped in a load of this steel uh, tray now. This is what we're fitting now, this four inch tray. But had I known that they were going for this big, you know, thick, chunky, heavy sort of industrial stuff, had I known this was what they were going to have, I'd have probably ended up ditching that tray 
and I'd have ended up putting, where I put the horizontal tray now running there, I'd have probably just ended up putting two 12 inch trays on top of each, one on top of the other, and one could have been data and one could have been power, and just gone for a really heavy, chunky look like that. I mean, it costs a little bit more, but I actually, I don't think cost is, I don't think cost is the issue here. Image, I think is what they're moving on, but, but I thought I'd just show you that, because that's actually what they're, this is sort of what they're aiming towards, which is nice. It's nice to see it develop actually and come along. So, yeah, I was talking to Dave about tightening these up. You wouldn't think two Newton meters is is that much. It really is. It's surprising how surprising how much that actually is. And the main switch is three and a half, but this only goes up to this only goes up to three. Some people were saying about why are you switching the neutral? Um, that's just what came with the board. Um, I know what you mean, you can get like the three phase switch and it's just a neutral carrier almost on this side and it's just the three, you have a three pole switch and then just the neutral carrier but I mean I'm, I get this is just what came with this board so that's just what. I've got to put a 25mm coupler, I've got to take that off and put a coupler on, I haven't got one. Those heads are good, this is the one that Dave uses on boards, those ones there, the ones, it's like a posi but it's got the cutouts on the sides if you see, they're quite good. They seem to grip better than a standard posi bit. I've got to work the side of the board up quickly. That bolt wasn't lying, it was lying around here somewhere. I've got to dig it out. If I, I'll, show you the, I'll show you the top side of the board actually. There you are, I think you can see it reasonably well. Those are the 20mm stuffing glands that I cut into the top of the board. Those there are the high tufts which go out to the three phase sockets and all that nonsense. And then those ones there are the 20mm uh, armour glands which I've taken in and just put a banjo. I put the banjo on the top and then just put a bolt through like that. And then just one, two, three, four of them, like so. Well, that's her, she's about done. I think there were a few people saying, why are you coloring? Why do you um, sleeve the three phase on, uh, on the three phase switches? Just personal preference, I mean, you don't have to. Um, and it's not like you're sleeving the whole thing, you're just leaving part of it. But that's just the way I do it, you know? Everyone's different. <laughs>